Hola a todos. I won't do this talk in Spanish, but because I haven't spoken Spanish for 10 years, but uh, I would be well, if you have, uh, want to talk to me in Spanish after that, let's try. Uh, first of all, most of you don't know me, so let's have some kind of presentation. I'm um, software craftsman, so I'm a developer. Uh, I work on the RDO engineering at Red Hat, RDO being the Red Hat OpenStack distribution. Uh, I also do on my free time a lot of open source. I'm a federal developer, part of the engineering committee. I'm also a CentOS developer. Uh, and uh, I'm the new project technical leader for the new OpenStack RPM packaging project. So I'm not paid to work on any of these projects. Uh, I've been interested in cloud computing since 2006, so uh, obviously uh, this was a topic that uh, interested me uh, for a while. So as a back-end person, I wanted to uh, try all these solutions and uh, compare them. And uh, if you, ha yeah, you want to get me after that, but you probably won't, uh, privilege outsources. I'm a freak spice, I'm a spice freak. So let's go, go on. Have you ever heard about Docker? Okay, who has never? Great, I won't spend time on, on this. Uh, this is my uh, coworker Dan Walsh, which is uh, SR Linux and Docker super hero, properly t telling you how to properly pronounce Docker, which is Docker. Well, I can't, uh, it's, it's in the US Middle West with weird accent, so I can't reproduce it, but funny thing. So let's see, say something straight about containers, uh, because uh, there are still people who confuse uh, what they are. They are an operating level method for isolating processes and Linux systems. So they provide sandbox to, re to run applications, so, and Another mistake that people make is confusing containers with Docker. Containers have been around for two decades. Uh, they are called Solaris zones in Solaris. Uh, they are FreeBSD jails. Uh, even the Linux, we have plenty of uh, containers technology. We have OpenVZ, Elixir. Uh, uh, we have uh, vServer and all. The only thing interesting is that Docker relies on uh, native kernel uh, infrastructure called control groups and namespaces. So uh, you don't need the out of tree uh, patches to, uh, ma to, to provide isolation uh, features. They're not full virtualization. They don't emulate any hardware. Remember that you share a single Linux kernel uh, for all your containers. So that's it. The emphasis is that you have a sandbox. Think, think of shoot on steroids. So Docker, so if containers are not a new technology, what is Docker about? It's about industrialization. It's about build on run everywhere because you package your application in a container image that you can ship everywhere and it will run the same, be it on your developer laptop, on your production server, or on, your, uh, on a VM, on a cloud instance, it will run the same. It also allows you to bring consistent continuous delivery because you don't have to expect any uh, weird issue on production. If, you, uh, if it works on your machine, it works on production. Uh, you can do reusability through layered image. Uh, if I want to provide a database image, I can take any image in the Docker app, for instance, the Ubuntu one, and then build up my database image on top of that. And when the Ubuntu image gets updated, I won't have to redo my own image. Uh, it also go on with the trend that the industry is moving from monolithic behemoth to microservices architecture. Uh, we're trying to break large, big enterprise application into smaller services. 
but what is interesting with Docker is that as you ship runtime with your application, you can also integrate gracefully your legacy apps and migrate them progressively to microservices without having to keep your old infrastructure aside. Uh, another topic, which is a bit annoying for me because I'm paid to do RPM package, is that it brings the question that our packa is packaging still relevant in a container world? Uh, my take is that yes, it is. Not just to s trying to save my job, uh, because it also allows you to build m more easily uh, your container image by using RPM. I will speak about uh, later another project which relies on RPM package uh, to do that. But uh, but it also it's it's also reusability, but for it's more containers is more geared toward end user. It's. For instance, uh, I won't have to do, if I have an RPM package for my application and I do, and I build up a container image with, based on that RPM package, it will work the same on the Debian, Ubuntu, or Slackware uh, system because I won't have to redo the packaging. It may, it's, all, it's also a different, it's all, you can also have hybrid ways to ship your application. And now, so Docker is a great technology to ship application, but it's a container. You need uh, something to run these containers. So we have to rethink about how we host this. So you can use your usual GNOME Linux distro with Docker. It, it works, but well, if you run your application and your maybe your why not your system services in container? Why bother with a full-fledged Linux distro? So you can go toward a minimal distro like boot to Docker, but boot to Docker, even from even its maintainer will tell you that it's not made for production, and it may not provide also all the tools needed for administration. You may need. Uh, also, since we're moving to microservice architecture, there's an important point is that you want to have cluster management uh, tools. So uh, you, have, you, you still need something that is not too minimal. Uh, the advantage of microservices is that you don't need uh, large hardware to run them. You want, may want to use commodity hardware. Uh, and as it's very fast to start a cloud instance, uh, cl uh, container, you may even want something that you can shut off instantly and bring it on very few, few minutes. So why not using cloud instances? So it doesn't feel right because we're still using the same tool. We are changing our architecture, but something is wrong. So. Let's try another another way. Let's take up our requirements for an hosting container system and try to see if we can, if there is something that fits or we can build to work for us. So I'd like also to take time on a few things we haven't spoken for. Containers application have now transactional atomic updates with Docker. So you, don't, you, you can update small bits of your application and do it transactionally. And if it doesn't work, you can roll back, which is cool because you don't want to break your production system. And the uh, application runs in the isolated sandbox, so why not my system services too? If they fail, they shouldn't fail the whole system. And starting and shutting down containers are is cheap, so we want maybe the same. So why not applying this to our hosting system? And we want that, obviously. So we want a minimalistic system. So realistic because we, like, we are engineers, we like fancy stuff. Or we would, our docker wouldn't have taken this fast in the community. Uh, we want application shipping in containers, which means not shipping application through packaging. Uh, system services should run in containers. 
uh, we'd like to have an insecurity with through isolation mechanism because uh, remember I said that containers are not for virtualization you have less isolation than using virtualization like KVM, XAM or IPv. So we may want to use some security module to provide isolation like SLinux or App Armor and uh, all the other ones. I want, uh, there are too many to, to list. And we want transactional atomic system updates and also native clustering management. So surprise, it's already there. We, in fact, the earliest uh, system uh, in this list came out uh, nearly six months after the first public release of Docker. So we have CoreOS, Project Atomic, Snappy Ubuntu, Photon, Rancher OS, and plenty others. Uh, I focused on these five ones because uh, the, three one, the three on top are the main ones, uh, the most mature ones. Uh, Photon is kind of interesting because it's brought on by a leader in the virtualization market, and Rancher OS is very specific, so I find it very interesting. So they all comply with the previous requirements, so, and they also all use common components like Kubernetes, TCD, CloudInit. There are variations, of course, because if they were all the same, well, we wouldn't be there. So, but it's important to see that there are all more, uh, major change in the way we handle infrastructure. So let's review a few components. Uh, we still have uh, some time, few, some time, so let's move on. Uh, Fleet is a distributed inner system or clustering management tool. Uh, if you hate systemd, sorry guys, it, it leverages it. Uh, it uses in it, uh, the init system, it uses its logging feature through journal D, socket activation, which is awesome. If you hate systemd, I don't understand because we just socket activation is the killer feature you want for infrastructure. Uh, socket, uh, does anyone know what is socket activation? Okay, so some people don't. Uh, socket activation is uh, starting an application th when you try pinging a socket. For instance, I send a request on uh, the port 80 and I haven't start my, uh, it, it says to my, uh, to system DA, someone uh, send a request to that port, start, please start the HTTP daemon and uh, hold on to that, the request for me until the, the uh, HTTP server is up and when it's up, give it the request and serve as usual. So it will allow lazy starting of services, which is awesome for my infrastructures. You want that because if a service is, a service is, is not used, why bother starting it in the first place? Um, it's, we systemd is not used to start processes within containers. Actually systemd within containers doesn't work. So you even have a fake system D to allow uh, some processes that relies on some system D features to run inside containers. So you start containers which will run one process and uh, which is okay with the Docker model which is one process per container. This is the model. You can start multiple processes but, well, this is the model. Fine grain scheduling and machine discovery but Machine discovery relies on the next component, which is a TCD. A TCD is a uh, world beast. It's most data, mostly data store containing uh, ephemeral data the, in unit files, cluster presence, unit status. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it, it provides service discovery. Uh, it's basically, it provides synchronization primitives. I like to think of it like a Zookeeper lightweight alternative, uh, but uh, it's still very specific uh, to, uh, to the containers world. Uh, we have also cloud in it, uh, because if you start on-demand systems, you want to, uh, you can't 
configure them. Be, uh, you, can, you can pass this configuration because you, so you use a daemon called CloudInit that will rerun on start time and retrieve data from an endpoint to, inis, to initialize your cloud instance or your hardware instance, works on both. And uh, it's more or less a standard. It's something, it's a tool built by Canonical. And uh, it's very useful for stateless systems. Kubernetes, uh, it's made basically container orchestration by Google. Uh, it's not inside the hosting system, it's more, it's an orchestration tool. So basically it will be used to provision your cloud instance and your hardware and uh, run your, uh, your um, sorry, uh, your uh, hosting uh, system, and then it will uh, start your application within the system. It handles physical OS, Google Compute Engine uh, OS, Mesos Core OS uh, machines, Atomic OS. It provides scaling, self-healing replication mechanism. Uh, basically, I like to think as the lingua franca of uh, the containers world. It's uh, the one tool uh, to run the um, to rule them all. So let's review our container because we have now less than 10 minutes. Uh, CoreOS, it's a derivative of Chromium OS, which is itself a derivative of Gentoo. Uh, it's the oldest one in the list. It's relatively major. They created the TCD and fleet we spoke about before. They also created a competing uh, container engine called Rocket which is uh, more or less a clone of Docker, but uh, with standards. Well, it recently changed as in DockerCon, uh, CoreOS and uh, Docker Inc. recently announced that they will be working toward a common specification for containers. Uh, does not support software installation on the host, so you have to run a privileged container called Toolbox, which is federal based, yay! Which you, which you can use to install anything you want for debugging purpose. It has not additional security isolation, which is, to me, the only default in CoreOS user story. And uh, there are still question now if they are still going to use Rocket or the standardized container uh, runtime. So, if you want to test uh, to test one of these, CoreOS may be a safe bait. The, uh, the, new, the other one is uh, Project Atomic, which is funded by my employer, but I don't work on this project. Uh, basically, it's taking all our uh, family of distribution, Fedora, RHEL, CentOS, and we provide for each of them a variant, which is called an Atomic host. Uh, the main difference is that you don't use you. you we use something called RPM Austri. Austri is uh, like Git for binaries, if I want to, su to sum up. So it originates from the GNOME CI platform. So it's used to you maintain your system as, a, as in layers of image, much like door containers image which is nice because it nicely fit with the Docker story. And uh, RPM Austri is an additional layer with, that allows you to build that image layers from packaging. So either you take uh, from uh, Fedora on CentOS uh, website, the Atomic host image and deploy it on your machine and uh, run it and get updates uh, from, the, uh, from the website, from the web, uh, from uh, the repo, it's not repository, I don't remember which is the proper word, but from our website. Uh, or you can build your own image with your own packaging and package set using RPM Wall Street. So it's kind of a middle ground between traditional system and modern company host systems. And, uh, and it's pretty much the same as um, CoreOS uh, in the plan of using uh, the um, on using on deep, on managing application uh, on managing application uh, on the system. 
Uh, it has matured uh, quite recently, but um, it's pretty much on the same level of support as CoreOS now. It should, at least. And uh, we have additional security uh, layer with SL Linux, which provide more isolation. Remember my coworker, Don Walsh, which is the guy who implemented it, and uh, that's quite interesting, five minutes. And then let's uh, go to review the, sec the other one, Ubuntu, Snappy Ubuntu, which is, may seem the most recent one, but in fact, uh, it's based on an old work from Canonical, uh, the work from Canonical on phones called Ubuntu Core, and uh, they're also there just in our operating system, which already used LXC containers to, uh, to isolate apps. They use app armor uh, to, uh, to enforce isolation. Which is interesting in, this, in their model is that they have an additional abstraction layer which is frameworks and application. Basically frameworks are container engine and applications are the containers themselves. Which is interesting because you're not limited to containers because you can consider someone bringing a framework to run Android applica uh, applications on a Linux system, for instance, and uh, have it run uh, on your own system. Uh, another variation is that it uses LX LXD, which is uh, another, well, I, I, they call it an hypervisor, I would call it a Docker clone, but uh, that's a matter of uh, definition. But it also can use Docker because, well, LXD, be, LXD being very recent, uh, they don't know where the market are, is heading, so they keep uh, both ways, both technologies. Photon. Photon is still a tech preview from VMware. It's uh, based on Fedora. It plans to build their PMO series, so I think in the end it will be pretty similar than um, uh, Atomic. Uh, get interested in because they have a Yum compatible package manager called TDNF. TDNF. Uh, it's still very new, not much. I would still follow it because, uh, but it's not something you can use in production. It's still also tied to VMware products who can run it now on uh, VirtualBox. I reached to run it on KVM, but it's still very recent. Rancher OS, my favorite one, really, because not because I, that's the one I would use it uh, in production, because, because it has a very much more radical model, which is very interesting. It has an extremely minimal footprint. It doesn't use systemd as a paid one. It uses Docker, and it's also it also you and it runs do the Docker for application, another Docker daemon for application, in a Docker container, which is Docker Inception, and uh, we, it is amazing because it brings some kind of uh, uh, fault tolerance. Uh, it's kind of uh, for leverage fault tolerance for uh, Docker. Oh, sorry. I mean, the, uh, the spotlight is, is very strong and it's uh, kind of disturbing me. Uh, sorry. And, um, well, so it's very different from the previous one. So that's why I find it very interesting. Uh, they are geared toward embedded device and internet of things, which are, is now the next big thing in the uh, tech industry. So it's very interesting and uh, it works quite well. But uh, I, I, I wouldn't use it in a, an industry IT infrastructure because it still lacks some features like clustering. One minute. Well, in the end, I'll be not be too late too much. I provide you so much short cho choice now that you must hate me, and I didn't give you the uh, right solution because I don't have one. Because uh, because this is kind. Remember, this is an emerging model. Things change fast. Atomic cost one year ago was completely different than now. And the same for CoreOS. Now I think we have reached maturity, so we can start using them in production. So we still don't know which will be the right model. 
I think that CoreOS, Atomic, and Snappy are maturing. Uh, in terms of resources, they are pretty much the same, be it uh, disk resource, memory usage, no, same. I think security-wise, Atomic and Snappy have much consistent user story because they use additional, they use mandatory access control security models to provide enhanced security, enhanced isolation, sorry. So, sorry, Corus, but you, s you have to fix that if you want to, st to stay relevant in that market. I'm sorry, I'm going a bit over on but in the end. Uh, and uh, Rancher OS is interesting because it targets a niche market. So I think it will fare pretty well be because uh, none of the three previous one will be targeting internet of things. Maybe snappy, but well, Knowing canonical, uh, we, they will utterly fail if they do. Uh, I like trolling. <laughs> and uh, Snappy and Photon target different uh, containers technology through, through they still support Docker. It also stresses that the importance of cluster management because you see Kubernetes can handle CoreOS and Project Atomic in the same infrastructure similarly. So you don't, it's not, the, there is much less coupling on the base system. So it doesn't mind. So I'll be wrapping up for this and leave some time for Q&A. So thanks for my uh, co-worker, Michael, uh, my friends, Marianne and Mathieu for proofreading, Dr. Sheldon Cooper for uh, his inspiration. Credits uh, goes uh, to the Baby Terry Show for the inhibited gifts. And thank you guys for staying there because uh, I may not be the best speaker around, but uh, I appreciate this. Thank you, Michael. So we do have time for a few questions, maybe about uh, two of them. So anyone has any question? Okay, how about that? Hi, so I take it that uh, RPM OS3 uses a different binary format for um, the images. Uh, how many container images are there out there? Because I noticed Docker, Im the containers you build for Docker can run on most of these things, but I take it not all of them. Basically, uh, Docker containers, I can run them uh, as I'm building them now, if I'm using Docker and Docker build to build the containers. I can build, run those images on most of these, but I understand not all of these. Can I, is that correct? Or how many formats, binary formats, are there now? Oh, you mean uh, formats of, for, of images? Yes. Um, yeah, uh, the interesting thing in, uh, in Docker is that they have standardized the image format. This is, even if they haven't do that, done that, we wouldn't have uh, to build on run everywhere. I think, I, I, that's why I think Docker is about industrialization. You can, I did containers way before Docker happened. But the, the, pay, the pain was doing these images. You, when you do an image for OpenVZ, you weren't even sure it would work on a different OpenVZ host. So when Docker build that, build that, they say the, they say, they say the, the, the they say the word. That's why, that's why they're so, they're so, uh, they created so much noise around this technology. I think there is a question here. Yes. Yeah. Right. This will be very, very short. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, as you work on RDO, yeah. I, I want to understand, is, do you see a solution for supporting external storage system in these, container environment just oh. like it is in the OpenStack world? Could it yeah. be standardized in some way? So if uh, I am no. at yes. OpenStack storage system, I could use it via a container? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I see two questions. The first one being, uh, we, can we use uh, industrial storage system uh, for containers? And the answer is yes, we can. 
uh, Docker has some uh, has storage drivers to allow that. So you can do this with do from Docker directly. Uh, since you mentioned OpenStack, I see another question is that how we mingle the containers in uh, cloud, cloud infrastructures. So uh, we, have, uh, we have various uh, initiatives to bring containers to the OpenStack world. Uh, we have the Nova, uh, Nova services, which is the hypervisor service in OpenStack, has now has, uh, rebooted uh, the Nova Docker uh, dry, uh, initiative. So it would allow you to run directly containers from OpenStack to using the same, uh, the same infrastructure as usual OpenStack. So you would be able to upload images in uh, the image service and uh, run them. Does that answer your question? If you want, we can talk okay. after that. Yeah. Uh, I have time. I have time. Yeah. Thanks again, Eichel. You're awesome, guys. <laughs>